Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be reviewing the game Above the Skies that I recently finished. The game was made by Valkyria Games, apparently part of a bigger group called Adorlea Games, but other than that I have no recollection of any projects that they may have done. First off, mechanically, the game takes a very traditional RPG Maker approach with having very standard things in place. The combat does not deviate at all from the base RPG Maker formula, having separate MP and special pools, and having leveling up be the way to gain new spells and abilities. There is no twist or strategy, simply being a game of numbers, so if any part of the game is troubling, you most definitely can just level up to solve it. So this brings me to the, my next point, progression. This is rather horrendous, if I'm being blunt. The game gives almost entirely no direction of where to go after the mandatory first maps, and because of this, exploring is not only encouraged, but required. This means it is extremely difficult to not be overleveled doing the first main story dungeons of the game, granted if you can even find them. Gear and loot is literally the only way to progress your characters as while gold at the beginning of the game is extremely scarce to the point that it is almost impossible to fully equip a character, it is literally useless by the end of the game. The first shop of the game, to my knowledge, is the only shop of the game, and it never updates that merchandise. This means that by the time any loot from the dungeons gets marginally better than the shop equipment, the shop, and by extension gold, is useless. There is nothing to spend gold on, as even the most expensive place to heal costs 10 gold, which is roughly 1 30th of one encounter near the mid to late stages of the game. This, coupled with the forced exploration, means that progression is never consistent. Another point I'd like to elaborate is the degree of exploration in the game. As I've said before, the game requires it. At first, it is a novel thing, and seeing semblances of world building is interesting, but nothing ever gets expanded upon, and the reward for finding new areas is either loot or gold, both of which are not unique. It is entirely possible to get the same gear from multiple exploration spots including main story dungeons, so there is almost no reason to go out of the way to find new areas. So while exploration is indeed present, it is fundamentally useless as it offers no story benefit, worthwhile world building, and is not even unique in the sense that treasure is not unique. Something that I do not tend to mention in my other reviews is balancing as the other games are mostly fine in that regard. However, this game has one of the poorest balancing structures I have seen. By far, Lauren, the team's cleric, is the best character in the game because she has both the best utility in the form of buffs and healing, but for some reason also has the highest damage output and fairly good defenses for most of the game until literally the very end of the game. Only one other character, Samaria, consistently outdamages her at the end game, and that is her role to begin with. She actually gets outdamaged until the end. Another character, Rost, has two weapons, sacrificing defensive stats, and yet somehow manages to have both the worst offense in the game and the worst defense simultaneously. Somehow even, there is an entire equipment type that literally is unused by any character, despite being both in the store and a possible loot from the dungeons. This, coupled with very questionable difficulty curves for the late game, makes Above the Skies truly awful in its balancing. Another area that I actually do not point out usually is glitches and grammatical mistakes. 
RPG Maker games are small scale, so I completely understand and overlook small errors here and there. However, Above the Skies has these mistakes in droves. The number of spelling mistakes, awkward phrasing, and outright incorrect sentences accumulate into something that simply cannot be overlooked. Additionally, glitches as early as the opening cutscene, with Lauren having an incorrect portrait, and sometimes music missing in some areas, means that the team did not even care to proofread or review before releasing the final product. I don't normally criticize things like this, but as I've said, having these mistakes to such an excess is inexcusable. And finally, we are on to the story. In my opinion, this is definitively the weakest part of the game. There is no introduction sequence to explain the state of the world or the characters and their motivations. There is no elaboration, no insight, and due to this, no investment into the plot or the characters. You have to piece together the plot, and even then there is not much of it. Like I said, during the progression segment, there is no direction on where to go, and there is no story to follow. Events rapidly occur from point A to point B without stop. Literally no character has a tangible personality because the player does not know who they are and why they are there. This would be fine if the gameplay has some unique and differentiating twist to separate it from the other RPG Maker games on the market, but there isn't. And to top it all off, spoiler alert, the game literally does not have an ending. I did not know I was at the final boss of the game until after I beat the final boss. After which, I had a very short cutscene and it cut back to the title screen. There was not even a credit sequence or any sort of satisfaction of seeing how the party dealt with the aftermath of attaining their goals, no matter how shaky those goals were. It left me feeling hollow and thoroughly dissatisfied with my experience. In conclusion, if I had to rate the game numerically, as a standalone RPG Maker game, it's honestly around a 2 out of 10, and that's considering if you think that 5 is dead average. There is nothing mechanically that distinguishes itself from other RPG Maker games, and the story is not only lacking, it is actively hindered by the progression system. Exploration, while fun at first, is useless and does not build on the world because the player does not know what the world that is being built upon. For its fairly high price point for an RPG Maker game, I definitely cannot recommend this game for the time and money invested, as it is also a rather short experience. But the biggest insult by far is making a paid DLC that is around half the price of the game that is only a guide for what to do because the game does not do it itself. This is intentional by design and is very greedy. I do hope that Valkyria Games, should they release another title, learns from these mistakes and improves, because I have very little positive feedback I can give. Anyway, to anyone who's watching, thanks. I hope you have a refreshing day. Peace.